All right, welcome back. So now that we have the slab, we can talk to this twat, uh, Doctor Oon, uh, and he teaches us the Lefinish language, which we need in order to talk to the people of this town that we're about to head to. This is the final town in the game. Um, if you try going here prior to getting the slab and having it translated, uh, all the inhabitants will say are like some gibberish word that you don't know, so. Gotta, gotta get the slab. Return the slab. No. Thankfully, none of that. None of that here. <laughs> Alright. And unfortunately, yeah, you can't park any closer to this town. It is definitely the most... It's supposed to be the most isolated town. Here are the Lefinish. Only our bravest became Sky Warriors. Your airship was theirs. At the time of destruction, a legend was born. In 400 years, warriors with orbs will appear and save our people. Are you... I will give the game this. The translation is not bad. Like, sentences are very coherent. Uh, and overall, like, you could probably get by in this game, at least from a go here the here type of uh, standpoint without a guide. You probably don't need a guide to find where you're going because it might take a little longer because you have to figure it out on your own, but I mean, nothing here, of course. I really wish you would do that. We have passed on the legends from generation to generation, but 400 years have caused our Memories of fate, or something like that. I wonder if the robots made by our ancestors are still moving. Yes, yes, they are. They, they are indeed. Flowing Castle, our ancestors lived there. The Mirage Tower is the entrance. We knew that a great power controlled the fiends. Our five bravest warriors left, never to return. Oh. Why do they always go in the direction that I don't want them to? We fought with Tiamat, but were unsuccessful. The fiend now inhabits the, our floating castle. I believe this is the guy, yeah. With this chime, you can enter the Mirage Tower. So, yep, yeah, that's our MacGuffin that we needed in order to actually enter the Mirage Tower. I don't know what happens if you try to without it. I'm guessing it just doesn't allow you. So, and if you go... Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> um, if you go up to the top right-hand corner up here, and go all the way over, you will find your white and black magic, and light too, which is essentially a raise in later games, and the most powerful black magic, Nuke, aka Flare, in later games. So, yep, those are the two best spells of the respective uh, types. And obviously, only the white wizard and black wizard can learn them respectively. So, we do go ahead and get break, just uh, when we're back in Gaia, by the way. I know I jump around a lot but it, it's just a cut down on stuff, because I think in total, the entire playtime of raw footage was about 22 hours, although some of that was definitely resetting. 
So I believe there's like two spots on the desert that you can uh, you can land. Alright, welcome to the Mirage Tower. So, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and grab all the goodies. Got chimeras. I think these things can poison you, I wanna say. These are staple enemies of Final Fantasies, uh, Final Fantasy games. Yeah, I think that's the thing with uh, the original Final Fantasy. There aren't a lot of staple enemies in this one. I think a lot of the staple ones come in Final Fantasy 2. Because I know that one introduces behemoths and a few others. Behemoths are the one I immediately think of when I think of Final Fantasy 2. Um, it also introduces chocobos, obviously. So... I'm trying to think of, like, I think the Iguana enemies show up occasionally in later games. I know they were in 6. Um, other than that, I'm kind of blanking on what else uh, shows up. Honestly, that's something worth looking up, actually. Uh... Like, I know worms occasionally show up in later games. Um, dragons of different kinds will show up. Like, obviously a blue dragon, red dragon, those type of things show up occasionally. The imps, I think, are goblins in later games. But, yeah, that's... Kind of the most obvious ones to me. Alright, let's walk around here just to talk with this guy. Are you the master? Nope. I would like some kind of reaction to the technology in the back. Like, some strange technology. Yeah, I'm not really seeing a whole lot that kind of stick out to me as, um... future enemies. I think wolves and wyverns are another one that I do recognize. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, let's grab all the treasure. Nothing here, of course. It is interesting to look at some of the Final Fantasy 1 uh, remake. 
oh, this is just straight up Final Fantasy enemies. Um, or the Dawn of Souls versions. Um, because it includes some bosses that are not in the original game. Actually, quite a number of bosses that are not in the original game. So I believe you can actually run into vampires in this tower. Um, which I don't think I'm really showing off just because we've already seen them. But yeah, the, uh, the mini boss of the, uh, the first fiend dungeon becomes just a regular mook that you can run into. All right. And unfortunately this is a mandatory encounter that you cannot go around. This is a blue dragon. Um, I think lightning is its main weakness. It is pretty dangerous. I mean, all the dragons in this game are pretty dangerous, so... Okay, maybe not lightning. Maybe just hit it as hard as possible. There you go. The Bane Sword I was born in the darkness, molded by it. Yeah, I, I don't really have a good Bane impression, unfortunately. In fact, I don't think that's how. Is that how Bane spells his name? Bane. Okay, yeah, that is. Thankfully, I do have ribbons on a couple of my characters at this point. You only get three ribbons in this game. I believe the last one we get in this dungeon. Um, so you cannot fully equip all of your party members. There is a weird cool, uh, bug with the, with the monk, monk master class and ribbons. Armor just in general in the, uh, the NES version. Um, I decide not to mess with it just because I don't really, I don't fully understand what <laughs> what the issue is with it. And I don't really want to risk my monk losing all of <laughs> its, all of their natural defense, though. So. Alright, we got air. I don't know how we won against air, but sure. <laughs> Just punch it in the face and it dissipates. Alright, so we are in the floating castle, by the way. And it's also... We're apparently in outer space right now. I'm trying to verify that there's... I can avoid any... Traps. I actually don't believe there's any um, mandatory encounters in this place, ironically. This definitely feels like the most likely place to have for those things. Go up this side, and then I believe... Badman! Yeah, I'm not really sure what these are supposed to be. They, they kind of look like little knights. They don't have very much health. Um, the only thing is they tend to come in much larger groups than that. And they can... They, and their damage starts to add up uh, if you let them.
Alright, I believe this is the room with the ribbon. Obviously, that's just pitiful gold. A heel helmet, which is kind of handy. Pro ring, nice. No, okay. Ribbon is not in this room. That's the pro ring. Pro rings are essentially protect rings. They protect you from instant death attacks. Alright. Take the next teleporter up to the next level. So I believe there's three levels of items. What we got here? A house and a silver helmet. Cool. Fairly useless and pretty much useless at this point. <laughs> money. And more money. Woo! Yeah, at the, by the end point of this game, you should be swimming in cash probably have sold a lot of the items that you've picked up uh, because they're mostly useless at this point. Adamant. Okay, so if you remember way back, maybe like episode three or four at this point, um, we ran into a dwarf who said that he could make us a sword if we brought him Adamant, which is Adamantium. Um, ooh, white shirt? And a black shirt. <laughs> they actually are more exciting than they sound. Um, but anyways, the in between um, now and when we fight the boss of this place, I am going to go and get the sword. Hey, there's our third ribbon. So, um. We are going to be giving that to our black mage. Excellent. So, yeah. We'll, we'll be taking care of that in a little bit. But, um... So, the black and white shirts. The black shirt uh, casts Ice 2 when used as an item. While the white shirt that does I cast uh in biz two uh or um here, hold on. Sorry, trying to find the exact what it does. So... Okay, it casts Invis 2 when used as an item. Um... It's actually a really great item uh, to use, because the more that you cast it, the higher and higher it is, or the harder and harder it is for enemies to hit you. It's not like um, fire, or a fire, or a ice, or a lightning, where it only really works once, you can't really stack it. Alright, we got some rock golems. We're not really going to bother with it in, like, the regular mook fights, but definitely during the boss fights, it is very helpful.
Okay. What do we got? Yeah, honestly, this would be the dungeon that I'd expect a lot of trap spots or mandatory encounters. So, uh, Pro Cape, pretty good item as well. Uh, we're going to be giving that to our fighter, I believe. Okay, here we go. We got man cats. Man cats can be pretty dangerous. Um, so, if you remember the cat man that we or cat men that we would that we fought, this is essentially the upgraded version, and they can hurt. Um, and I believe you can run into these guys, or, uh, yeah, because they can cast fire too, and they like to do that a lot. Um, you can run into these guys in the temple, or into the, uh, the Castle of Trials, or Castle of Ordeals. Um, and yeah, that, that 102 right there. Thankfully our ribbons are helping out quite a bit, uh, keeping us from... Keeping us mostly safe, except for Carrie, of course, since Carrie does not have it. But, yeah. Yeah. Now imagine running into the, in these guys when you're like two or three levels lower than what I am right now, which is probably below t level 20. Um, and before you have really any ribbons. Because, in theory, you could be running and going to the, uh... In, in, usually you're going to the Temple of the Fiends, or not Temple of the Fiends, um, the Castle of Ordeals prior to having any ribbons. So... Soft. Some money. More money. And a katana. Nice. I don't think we're gonna be using it using that katana since um we're just gonna have better swords here. Also, that little box over there is a way down if you uh if you need it. So I do decide to go and visit the dwarves really quick. Um Plus, I just wanted to make sure we saved before uh, going to fight the boss, Adamant. Awesome. So, now we have Excalibur, uh, which is the second best sword in the game uh, after the Masamune. This is another classic uh, sword that shows up... Um, throughout the games. So, there we go. Our fighter, or er, our knight, or whatever, now has that. We are also going to be getting... I can't remember if we get, uh... I think we get Wall and Exfer, although I don't think Exfer was the one that we should have gotten. I can't remember. The names are so weird, and a lot of a lot of guides don't use the NES names, which is really annoying. When, because uh, I looked up like what spells are actually useful in this game. So, uh, stop, and I guess we'll go with uh, quadruple X because I like the name. Honestly, you can't go wrong with any of the uh, the names on level 8. Alright, so at this point there are no more treasures, so I would honestly recommend saving and coming back here. So go two to the right, and then two down, like two of these black squares down. And there you go. 
All right. Welcome to Wormex Bridge. So you might not realize it from this because I'm cutting them out, but the encounters I feel like are jacked up on this bridge. Lightning erupts from the fiend's ball. So you have come this far. I, Tiamat, the fiend of the wind, will now put an end to your adventure. Alright. So, of all the fiends, Tiamat is probably the hardest. Which, you know, makes sense. He's, or he, she, whatever. This thing is the last one. So, um... So, looks like... Honestly, the best way to take out any of these bosses is just cast quick and try your best. Because there's not much else you can really do against these guys. As long as he doesn't target me while I'm trying to heal, we'll be fine. Tiamat, or at least this version of Tiamat, has a thousand health. Okay. We're fine, we're fine. Tiamat also has quite a bit of absorb, um, just to uh, let you know. Using the white rope helps a lot um, against its physical physical attacks. Ouch. God, he hurts so much. But he's terminated, so it's fine. <laughs> Alright, and... Oh, we, we're not quite done. Not bad. Usually we end, like, right here, but... Anyways, we are back in Crest Lake. Now that we have uh, defeated all four of the fiends, let's talk with the sages for a second. And I do like that they update their dialogue after all the fiends, because generally with these type of games, they don't really update dialogue at all, and obviously that's the case for most of the NPCs here, but... Time loop. You must eliminate the enemy who controls from 2,000 years in the past. Someone traveled 2,000 years to the past. Before fiends were sent forward in time, those fiends threatened to destroy the world today. I see now, someone who traveled back 2,000 years is the cause of the world's destruction. After 2,000 years, he will travel back again, then again, then again. Poison for Cusco. Cusco's poison. Light warriors, only you can. Yeah, we we know. <laughs> Have all the orbs. It's okay. There's <laughs> only just for 400 years ago we lost control of the wind. 200 years later we lost control. Of, uh, lost the water. Then earth and fire followed. Powers that bind this world are gone. All right. And. Let's see, what else do we need to do? I think uh, at this point we are going to head back to uh, our final location for, the, for this playthrough. Um, so, in order to find where we need to go, if it's not already, so, not already obvious, we need to go to the center point of where 
the four fiend dungeons were. So, we kind of cross your eyes a little uh, and make imaginary lines between everything. Um, you can find where that was supposed to be. But first, Warmack! Alright, I guess I forgot that I put the Warmack fight. <laughs> I thought we were fighting him in the next part, but... Um, so, this is Warmack. This is a random encounter that you can fight on that bridge. Um, it's a 1 in 64 chance of running into him. But that's this is why I recommend going and saving after you got all the items. So, yeah, this this thing is fast. It has a thousand HP. Um, by fast, I mean that it uh, it has extremely powerful moves. It has nuclear, which is a multi-target nuke, essentially. So our goal is. The, try and will down its health as fast as possible before it takes us out. <laughs> you don't really need to fight this thing, to be honest. It's really just for bragging rights, but I figured I'd at least show it off. You know? Nuclear. Oh. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> And again, uh, your white mage cannot cast life on a party member in battle. Alright. Yeah, pretty much pulling out all the stops as far as white magic goes, because I know that we're going to... Yes, yeah, saber is not going to be helpful. Oh, man. Ouch. Somehow Khan survived that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately Saber is not a very useful move. <laughs> Alright, unfortunately we do not have Nuke just yet. Not that it does a whole lot, if I remember correctly, against this thing. <laughs> uh, I'm trying my best here. <laughs> Trying to find something that Khan can actually use that could actually be beneficial. Honestly, just a powerful level 3 magic is probably our best bet at this point. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, 38 damage for... Whew. Wow. Alright. And that is the Warmech fight. So... Alright, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next part as we finish up the game.